Mr. Blair, as we wait for the Supreme Court to deliver its judgment tomorrow, there's still that concern of what has already transpired. Those uh, harsh words or exchange of words between the, the speaker, well, the speaker said his at that press conference on the 6th of November ahead of the reconvening of the House and actually directly accused the executive and the judiciary of colluding to weaken Parliament. And we heard Alexander Penyomark in there also accusing the, the speaker of rather setting gun on fire. You should be concerned about this. Of course I am. But let me go back a bit and have a little comment on the uh, what my very good friend. Fortunately, as I said, we went to school together, so I don't want to be too hard. I've listened to him throughout what he mentioned. I don't know exactly his main point. He agrees that uh, there are different roles. Mm -hmm. He agrees with Bentel that we don't have parliamentary sovereignty. We have separation of powers as separation as prescribed in the Constitution. What I can say about that is that we have different roles. He did say so. The different roles, interpretation of the Constitution exclusively left with the Supreme Court, not even with all the courts, but just the Supreme Court. He did say that uh, making law, enacting laws, we leave it to, to Parliament. And then, of course, the executive has in his vortex all the power to execute the laws that are made. Clear. Clearly defined. These days we also have a few institutions. The account, the Auditor General, human the Electoral rights. Committee, Human Rights. Shari, we call them democracy institutions. They've also been put about. So indeed, what remains of what the old theory of uh, separation of powers is accountability. And uh, fortunately, within the four walls of the Constitution, all rules are made. If you overstep your role, then of course the interpreter as whether you overstayed or not goes back to the Supreme Court. That's its role. But That's its role. Mm. Now, what has happened is that it's not that you are allowed to debate on the floor. You are definitely allowed to debate. You have freedom of speech in Parliament. But of course, if you take a decision to, for example, abolish the Constitution. We take a decision to, as it were, abolish parties, other parties, and so forth. Because anybody takes you to the, under Article 1, 2, or 3, to the Supreme Court, you will be struck out. But we have no power to do that. The Supreme Court can strike a law that is made by the legislature as unconstitutional. But this was one, this a law? Do, was this please. a law? What do you mean? Is by this that? a law? That it's, it's, before it's, it's the Constitution. No, I'm saying that is this a law? The decision of Speaker. Is this a law? In fact, join that. In this case, that's what I no, don't. Between us, so, it should be more I don't want to go into it. Yeah, but but unfortunately, it. to the public, my very good friend, Mr. Speaker, Abel Bami, will come out to say that uh, he was expressing his opinion. But of course, this has led to... He didn't say opinion. He just said he gave information based on his own assessment. He didn't mention opinion, but he well, didn't I mention ruling he says, he says it's, it's not a ruling. Yes, he it's didn't an say opinion. it was a ruling. No, please, he didn't say opinion on the, Please, if I can finish. On the floor of Parliament, there are rules as to what engagement could be. At times he can give a statement. Time ordinary members can give statement. And motions can come, and then bills, all these things are set up. When the speaker gets up and say, based on what someone had asked, is giving a ruling or giving a statement, and based on the statement that is made, certain actions occur, there is a problem. And as I said, even before that kind of ruling, we are told the majority that are gone to him spoken to him that there is a conspiracy to bring such an action that it could create conf confusion. So please, don't do that. I've got, I'm going to court. First he says you're good because they don't go. And then later on he realized that it's going to happen. He goes to court. So you don't see anything wrong with what Apenyo did? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. That's the right thing to do. Come and talk to the speaker and if the speaker doesn't agree with you, You tie what his else? hands by going to the Supreme You court. don't tie his hands. You go to court for the interpretation of what is about to be done or what is being done so that, that there is law 
and the law is governed by the constitution but you know so I, I think at this stage not to go back too much but the concern is that and today the ag was actually on the floor uh addressing the court drawing that that uh i mean at, at the time that the court was hearing the case and he said that michael okwe was wrong but <laughs> the government didn't say michael okwe was wrong it took four years for this scenario or this case to come before the government realized that... Be, be, was what you're saying is a little bit out of context, please. When you want to go to the Constitution, for, go to the Supreme Court for, for interpretation, it's not a government that goes. It's an individual or a group of people that can go. If the, speak, the Supreme Court is sitting somewhere and you have not taken your application from your motion or your uh, matter for the Supreme Court to interpret. The Supreme Court is so motor can't take the matter up. Of course, sitting here, I will say that I disagree with uh, what I've had that occurred in terms of uh, 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 declaring a CMR for men and seat vacant at the time it, it occurred. So how come you're not talking about it? Because three members I, of parliament... Listen, mm. I, in the past, I have done that. I have expressed my own opinion, even among my own colleagues in the party that I don't agree to that. Because maybe in the past, I have also gone through that experience before. So I said I disagree with it, but that's not the issue here. If anyone doesn't take the matter to court, it cannot be adjudicated. And in ACMS case, nobody took, ACMS didn't go to court. So maybe he might have left it just like that. But, even but does it doesn't mean that mm -hmm. now, those who are dissatisfied, particularly considering the hang nature of parliament. You can't say that people should live in there and change positions and somebody call himself who before then have called himself minority leader. Just jump out and say, I've come to sit here and today but, call me uh, majority can I, leader. Can I, that is total can I make confusion. A point? Just tell me. So you are, we are lovely because you are colleagues, you know. I mean, if if a member of parliament dies, what is the process for notifying parliament? What is the process for, you know, uh, asking EC to substitute? Do you have to go to court? No, 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 no. For no, a no. declaration? No, 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 no. Please go to, it, go no. to the standing orders. No, 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 no. no, no I'm, I'm saying that I don't want to go into Supreme Court what they are going to do. And I, I will fully support whatever the land goes to their right. Don't, don't, let them, see, don't let go but, there. Yeah, but you see, 97F. Yes. It's a very interesting provision. Oh, yes. We all talk about G. In 97F, it says, if a member resigns from office as a member of parliament by writing under his hand, addressed to the speaker, by writing, he vacates his job. He said, I've resigned. Now, when you go to G, a very interesting scenario is created. That if he leaves the party of which he was a member at the time of his election to parliament to join another party, or six to remain in parliament as an independent member. So here, he doesn't need to write anything. But if there is evidence, clear evidence that <laughs> the person has left uh, the party. Uh, my, 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 but um, the, as I say, the, uh, I, uh, I, 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 I defer this as to said, the Supreme I Court. I have my opinion on yeah. that and say as no, to what constitutes so, living. But, 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 please, but, uh, let me make a point a little in rebuttal of what he said. Yeah. As I said, I've been to parliament. Parliament myself, at least for 12 years. He's trying to, uh, if, if I got it correctly, uh, Nana yeah. Tudas is trying to uh, bring some sort of context to the, the, no, the no, articles but, but we are referring to. Right here. Please. Is that necessarily G. being prejudicial? We all talk no, about G. G. Nobody talks about F. No, no, but F, uh, uh, there is no much difference as what it is. What except that one resigns. The other one is when he leaves, leaving, resigning. How it's does he different leave? from... How does he leave? What's no, the no, How does he show that leave he leaves? leaves. Living when a person has parliament. entered his in name, living, you know, living, registered living be, parliament you, could say on your own accord. Living parliament could be maybe you've been sat for whatever reason. And that article, even one, uh, uh, no, 106. Yeah. Living parliament sir, mean, sir, mean let, that. Sir, let me, let me express no, a no, certain I surprise. I wish I could make my no, let's, point. No, no. Yes, I mean, let's, <laughs> let me express a certain surprise. I'm really surprised that yes. the NPP. Yes. In particular, as an organization, hasn't run around to support the uh, G the way it, you know, the, the speaker, Okwe, did. Because you see, 
it, it's in his, there's a historical context to it. And we all know that in the first, under the first republic, you know, CPP, sorry, I don't know where to place you now. It's with MPP. You know, no, I'm just getting this mm. up. Okay. Look, the man is a, is a CPP inside out. But, <laughs> Masha, it was because they were CPP, I didn't want to, was depleting the I've, other I've, 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 I've had at some place to say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Don't please. let's go into that. that no, 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 we are not talking about law. Context. We are talking no, about no, our yes. historical context. You see? So it was because in this country we said we are not going to have a single party state. In this country, we said we are not going to we are going to run by what do you call it? Uh, multi partyism. Mm -hmm. You understand? So we we have to say we must protect it. We have to protect it. And I'll be coming to you, Kofi, very shortly after the break. But before that, I just want to get a quick clarity uh, from, Mr. from Blay. Uh, Mr. Blay. Uh, because, uh, Mr. Dazi, you mentioned that you were not completely. Uh, Mr. Bento, I think you want to come in before I ask that last question before we go on the break. Uh, if you've got something to say before we do that, please go ahead. Yes. Um Actually, with the earlier comments, there was a suggestion as if the issue of sovereignty was not clear. In the first article, the first clause of our constitution, mm -hmm. sovereignty is clear. And sovereignty lies in the people. It's written black and white. So yeah, I just wanted to say that's yes. no longer an argument. We can move on from there. We can move on from there. Agree. So I wanted to come to you because one point Mr. Dazi made was that he did not necessarily agree with Apenio. Marking as we speak now, the the, the agree with the penal marking oh, in terms of the, the, the decision of the NPP caucus to say that okay, because we are not sitting here, we're not coming back. We are not coming back. No, please, please, please. I'm a little surprised with, with what uh, my very good friend uh, Atunazi is saying. They've been in parliament they for the past four years, been sitting at a place, all of them know where you sit. It's only after this comment that you have decided not to go and sit there. And it's obvious that if they had gone, there was going to be a fight. Fiscal. And they avoided it. So you agree with simple. the boycott of parliament? Of it's not a question of boycott. They said that what has happened, Mr. Speaker, tell the people because of what you said, look at what they, they are doing. You've got to sit at our places. If you go there, we may be forced to exchange blows and there will be chaos. You don't want to do that. That's yeah, but who, who, who speaks but, for but the you people? Said you had serious who speaks for the business. people? No, no, but listen. If they had serious, if that matter had been taken up, and then by a day or two, you sorted it out. There was no need to. I'm, to, I'm saying that. To, but said, the last parliament time synergy, Parliament was was called, record, it was on at the instance of the majority. Listen, then. we've called. And then you've come we, back no, no, and you're no, no, saying no, no, that we've, because you're sitting at my be, place. Be wait. Parliament was adjourned synergy without a lot of government business being taken care of. They were surprised. They said, please, let's come back. And by, they went through the process and called two signatures and called back parliament. And you did come. And that indeed, they did not just come. They had engaged you behind the scenes that this is the reason why we had a little problem. Let's do this, let's do this, and sort it out. You had... According to them, I'm not too sure, whatever it's... Good. But you didn't have the numbers. No, no, listen, there was half of you. Even if you don't have the numbers, you are gen for the next day or a few hours. So why didn't they get seated? They just decided that, no, okay... No, please don't. NBC you are asking me a question. I'm saying mm. they're going to sit at dawn, 6 o'clock. Normally, we go to parliament around 9, 10. We start sitting. At dawn, they've gone there. And what are they going to do? To sit at where they, they used not to sit, but it, remove tax. Yeah, he but. says, look, if we come in to say, I'm coming to sit where I used to sit, there could be a problem. Look, he has said that we should be, have parliament where anybody Free can sitting. sit anywhere. Free but sitting. that's not what has been going on. If this is what is going to be done, let's all agree but you know that this will happen. Let me finish. Let, let me finish. We haven't agreed on that. We haven't agreed on that. And then it's only after your ruling. Can I have a point? Your ruling was that. Just another that. point. Just another point. So what I'm suggesting, so what I'm suggesting, so what I'm suggesting now, is that when we, reach, when we reach the river, we realize that 
we we have um, a burden. You you dump some of that items we, we, and they continue. We have to go. It doesn't for make sense for us to have parliamentarians not going to uh, parliament only because. They, are, they say somebody is sitting in my Please chair. Please just hold on. You when can't. we come back, oh, oh, oh. when people have paid you to be in parliament, I'm surprised. When there I'm, are, I'm, when I'm, there I'm are serious matters, Mr. Dazi, I will have to come back to you. Mr. Dazi, I'm surprised at what you are saying. So Mr. Blaine, I will have to come back to you, gentlemen. Please, I will have to come back to you, gentlemen. Today, you have to have the opportunity to conclude on your thoughts by yourself here on agenda on TV3. When we come back, Mr. Bento, Mr. Atudazi, as well as Freddie Blay and Mr. Kofi Bento will give us their their concluding thoughts and really the way forward. Don't go away. And you're still here on Agenda. Thank you for staying. Uh, we're di discussing, really, what's happening between Parliament and the Supreme Court. And uh, I have with me Nana Tudazi, former Chief of Staff. I also do have with me Freddie Blay, former First Deputy Speaker of Parliament, as well as the Vice President of Imani Africa, Kofi Bento. And I'm coming to you, Kofi, uh, Mr. Bento, because in the midst of this, the question people are asking is, how will the ruling tomorrow shape the relationship between Parliament Parliament and the judiciary. Your thoughts? The ruling tomorrow should not have any effect on the relationship between Parliament and the judiciary because that relationship is already set in law. The judiciary, or let me say the Supreme Court, by the Constitution of Ghana, is the only body to interpret law in this country. Number two, the legislature which is parliament makes law but please note this if parliament makes a law and somebody goes to the supreme court to complain that that law is contrary to the constitution or is not in conformity with the constitution the supreme court can strike down that law what it means is that parliament can do everything right but if what they do is not constitutional, the Supreme Court will rule and cancel everything they have done. It does not mean the Supreme Court is better than Parliament. They simply have different jobs. Mm -hmm. And if Parliament makes a law that is constitutional, even if all the Supreme Court justices do not agree with that law, they will still have to use it and rule based on that law as long as it is constitutional. So the question as to how this ruling is going to, you know, uh, change the relationship, it has to, it, it should not have any effect But they can, cite, they can cite precedent and change it. Is that not the case? They can cite precedent and change what? Depart from that. Depart what? From what? Depart from, I, I mean, I think from the beginning, we've been talking about a precedent that was set. Yes, now we are hearing, based on the arguments going on, that Michael Okwe was wrong and all of that. But again, the Supreme Court could make its own ruling and then look at precedent and decide to change it or set a new one. Let us set these things in proper context. I think one of my seniors over there was explaining something to you. The Supreme Court does not get up by itself and declare things constitutional or otherwise. If you find a problem with a law or otherwise, it's in the constitution, article one. You have to go to the Supreme Court and say, I find a problem with this. Can you please determine whether this is in conformity with the constitution or not? And then they will rule. Let me make a point to clarify this. There are laws that we lawyers call bad law. And there are judgments that we say they are pair in curiam, which means they were not ruled according to law. They are still on our books. The issue is somebody has to bring it up so that the justices or the judges will strike it down and fix that problem. The point I'm making is that the fact that uh, uh, Speaker Okwe took some actions at a certain time, I, for instance, disagreed with that. But I didn't go to court because it did not matter to me. And somehow nobody went to court because it didn't matter to anybody. It does not mean we cannot go to court you know, when the whole thing is repeated or when a similar thing happens again. So the use of what Speaker Okwe did really does not come out here because nobody brought it before the Supreme Court. That said, somebody has brought this one before the Supreme Court. You can't say that, oh, the other one was not brought before the Supreme Court, but this one has been brought before the Supreme Court. But because we let the other one go, we should also let this one go. That is lawlessness. 
once you bring it before the justices of the Supreme Court, they will look at the Constitution, they will look at the law, and if they decide that this is unconstitutional, they will strike it down. We have had many laws in this country that have run for many years. You know, my colleague Martin Pebu, you know, a public order act run for many years. The police were asking for, you know, people to seek permission first. After some time, somebody takes it to court, it's struck down. So let the public understand this. You have to bring the issue before the Supreme Court. You have to if bring, you bring the, the issue before mm. the Supreme Court, then they will make a decision on it. When they make that decision, it is not an affront to parliament. It is in consonance with the constitution that says that it is the constitution that is supreme in this country and it is the supreme court that determines whether something is in line with the constitution or not and routinely consistently there are many cases where parliament makes a law the law runs for a time somebody takes it to the supreme court the supreme court strikes it down it is not an affront to parliament it is not an affront to parliament let me get your final word um my what's the name again coffee bento coffee bento sorry Kofi, Kofi, I, I, I appreciate all the theories you are propounding. And you agree with it? Well, I don't disagree with them. But what Absolutely. I'm saying is, look, so listen, what we, we, please, please it. allow me to. The point is, we have a crisis on hand. I thought the whole idea about our meeting is, how do we get this crisis resolved? But it's, one, yeah, way, yeah. one way is, let's wait until, uh, what do you call it, tomorrow, the uh, judgment of court. That's fine. I, I, I go by that. But I'm saying that when we sit here as elders of the parties, elders of the state and whatnot, we should be able to look at the problem and then contribute meaningfully towards resolution of the party. And I've told you that if we have a very serious uh, affair where we have serious matters of state outstanding, you know, we must find maybe uh, another way of getting parliament to sit. To hear the case, I'm saying if it means free sitting, we should suggest that one. They will decide. You said, how do they, they haven't thought about it. There's nothing wrong with that. But secondly, I want to make a point that, you see, we have a very young democracy. We are just barely 30 years. I'm just saying, they're barely mm -hmm. 30 years as a democracy. America is talking about 250 or whatnot. You see, now we have what we term a hung parliament. That is all the, all the crisis over the last we'll four years. To, mm -hmm. I will come down. It's a hung parliament. Now, we never thought that we would get to uh, the situation where we call a hybrid uh, government. If where you, you can are, wrap up for us, because I, I, I need to wrap I'm up I'm going now. to do that. I'm just mm. going to do that. And uh, sometime last year, we had the opportunity, Mr. Kwamna Hoy and I, uh, and others, other professors, had the opportunity of examining what happened on the uh, 6th, 7th of January, 2021. And we, we, we submitted a, a draft parliamentary transition bill. We realized they don't have rules and regulations guiding the, 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 the process. So we submitted this, they've taken some, but we think that there must be a, a, a parliamentary transition law. There must be us. a parliamentary transition law to guide us. Thank you very Two, much. Two, there must be, you know, free sitting. We are we'll both like the U.S. representatives. I have so many more suggestions oh, we can come. Indeed, come. we'll have to wrap it up here. Thank you very much, Nana Tudaze, former chief of staff, uh, for joining us on Agenda. Also to Freddie Blay, uh, also uh, former deputy, first deputy speaker of parliament, and also to you, uh, Kofi Bentel. I'm sorry, we'll have to wrap up now. Uh, my name is Beatrice Thank you so much for joining us on Agenda and uh, see you again next week.